So how is approaching crafting an album today different for you guys than in the 60s and 70s? It used to be a long process. We used to go to Philly and stay there six months learning songs, accepting songs from different writing teams that Gamble and Huff had and any outsiders or even Eddie and I presenting songs. And we would stay there six months and we would learn those songs and as we learned those songs, they would cast them out, cast them out, cast them out until they got it down to what was really gonna be on that album. And that was normally in those days, 10, okay? Today, it's like a real, real fast production line. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they put you on a belt. <laughs> <laughs> they shove a song in your hand, and you don't even have to learn it. You don't get a chance to become intimate with the song, where there's great lyric that expresses something. You don't really get a chance to learn it and learn to how to express it while you're singing it. It's a real production line. You go in there and whoever did the demo tape, you listen to that verse, then you do that verse. You listen to the next verse and then you do that verse until you complete the song. I don't like it like that. I wanna to get to know the song because in reality, anytime I sing a song, it's from my heart to yours and I can't express that on a production belt you know what I'm saying with it running that fast I, I can't get that off I'll do the best I can but all of these songs I feel that I could have done much better now that it's coming out the more that we sing the songs now you hear different things that you could have done. So now you're singing it different than the album. Maybe that's a good thing because now in person, we're giving them a little bit more than they got on the album. But it's like, we're finally learning the song. We're living it now. The song is becoming inside of you so you are able to express yourself. And that's what he's saying. You, you, if you spend six months with a song, you're able to express that song just the way you feel it. Since the recording process is easier, I think there's a lot more of an influx of people who are singers because you can take your laptop, record a song in your room, upload it to SoundCloud, and you're good to go. But as you guys said, I think that does take away some emotional element. And another living legend, Shaka Khan, said earlier this month that you know she feels like today's music lacks talent and sincerity and a mission and an initiative. What do you think today's R&B and soul is missing? I, you, you, let me, let, <laughs> no, I'm gonna say it to you like this. It's like all the kids that play baseball, you give them all a ribbon here. You get a ribbon because you played the baseball. Here, you get a ribbon because you were in the game. You get a ribbon not because you hit the ball or you made some runs or you were a great pitcher or a great catcher. You only getting, you getting the ribbon because you were just participating. That's what we got, a lot of participators, but we have no one who's pitching the ball, who's throwing that strike, who's the, who's the lead off cat, who's gonna hit the home run. He gets a ribbon, so why do these other people get a ribbon? If you're not the man, you get no ribbon. You get no 30 million, you get, no, you get nothing. <laughs> yeah, they are giving it away like that, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I look at it, you know, they, you, it's like all of these young guys who's, who's saying that they're the king of R&B. It's like when, when Bobby Brown said he was king of R&B, I went, <laughs> <laughs> What have we come to? <laughs> yeah, he, he's going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So do you think there are any young singers carrying the torch of the genre right now? I like Usher a lot. Okay. Okay. Um, trying to think, oh, of course I love Beyonce. Um, 
but they have kind of made their bones in the business. Uh, do I see any up and coming? What's this kid, Sam? Um, Nick? Yeah. I, I like his sound. I like what he does. Um, uh, John B. With a little time, he can be really great. With a little education in the music, he could be great. Then there's a, you know, and you had, the rappers, the guys like Drake and all of them, they are the messengers now because they're delivering that social commentary that they really need to hear. There's really no singers doing it, but they're in the forefront because they're now saying the things, they're bringing to light the things that people need to hear. And I think that they have a possibility to last a long time. I don't know whether rap is something that's going to be considered. Uh, how, do, how, do you, how do you be a rapper at, at 60? And wear you and wear your pants all the way down. No, no. <laughs> not a, not a good look. How how you gonna feel when you see him doing that?